Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug, here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the video. All right, everybody, welcome to another video here. Um, for those of you viewing this today, Merry Christmas Eve, if you choose to celebrate that. Um, if not, happy holidays. We appreciate you checking out the video. Um, today, we're going to do an updated report on Omicron symptoms. There's been lots of discussions on what symptoms to be looking out for. What symptoms are people developing with Omicron? Are they the same? Or are they different than Delta and other variants? What should you expect? There are some new reports on this and some old reports on this. We're kind of going to bring them all together into what should be kind of a, a short shorter to the point video on just what to look out for. Um, are you vaccinated, unvaccinated, old, young? What types of symptoms might you expect? So with no further ado, we'll dive right in. The first kind of report on this was with Dr. Coetzee. We probably are mispronouncing that, apologies, but this is actually a South African physician. Um, obviously, South Africa, for those of you who um, are not as familiar with Omicron, was, was the first place Omicron was identified. Um, we do have a number of other videos out on Omicron that we'll link in the video description, including kind of a deep dive on all things Omicron. So if you're interested in kind of more details on understanding everything that's been going on with Omicron, definitely check out those videos. But Dr. Coetzee was one of the first South African physicians to think there might be a new variant out there. And um, they are the chair, actually, of the South African Medical Association and on the Ministry of Vaccines in South Africa. So, um, you know, we don't know them, but obviously they, they seem to be a well-respected physician. They work in an outpatient setting. And they essentially said that they started seeing these young patients, mostly unvaccinated, coming into clinic with one to two days of fairly extreme fatigue was one of the descriptions they gave, um, where they'd have one to two days of really bad fatigue, some body aches, and a headache. And these were some of the first patients that actually swapped positive for Omicron. Um, so this is a little different, right, than the the, the typical classic triad of symptoms we, we talk about with COVID, which is more kind of fever, loss of taste and smell, um, and cough. So fatigue, body aches, and headaches were kind of the predominant symptoms in South Africa for that first kind of leg of Omicron. But do keep in mind, you know, these were young patients who were mostly unvaccinated. Different populations might have different symptoms, but a little different than, than kind of the, the, we say pathognomonic, which is a, a word in medicine that means kind of the stereotypical symptoms for disease. These symptoms, as you might see, kind of are more uh, um, characteristic of, of something like, you know, a virus, not necessarily an upper respiratory infection, um, but something like a virus where, where you have the flu and you get really tired, you get body aches, you get a headache, rather than a lot of coughing and shortness of breath. Um, this went on with a little more study um, to be looked at by the ZOE, which is right here, Z-O-E. And this is actually an app that is run out of the United Kingdom as well as a Massachusetts General Hospital um, and many other places. And it's kind of a COVID symptom ongoing study where you can go on this app and you can self-log your symptoms, when they came on, how bad they are, all those types of things. And the Zoe looked at 117 patients who um, were suspicious and suspected of having Omicron and then looked at their most common symptoms. And what they found was one through five here. Um, they found that most patients actually reported a runny nose. After that was a headache. Now remember, headache is something that the South African uh, physicians reported to. Fatigue, same thing. South African physicians reported fatigue. And then they also reported sneezing and a sore throat. All right, so the top five symptoms was this runny nose, headache, fatigue, sneezing, and sore throat. Many patients also on the Zoe app reported loss of appetite and brain fog. And uh, just to note, most were vaccinated actually in this cohort. And that's different to this cohort in South Africa where most were unvaccinated. And again, these patient populations might have different symptoms um, because those vaccinated already have some antibodies at least to the wild type virus, which is kind of the original SARS-CoV-2 strain that may lead to a different immune response and thus different 
different symptoms. And you can see here some more kind of upper respiratory symptoms would be upper respiratory infection, URI. Oh, we don't know why that lagged, apologies. Symptoms such as runny nose, sneezing, a sore throat, mixed with some of these kind of generalized viral symptoms such as headache and fatigue. Only 50% of these patients in the SOE app of the 117 with Omicron um, had the kind of classical three symptoms of COVID being fever, loss of taste or smell, and cough. So that's important to pay attention to. What we're kind of seeing with Omicron is it seems like we're not getting these classical COVID symptoms as often, or we're more so getting some kind of systemic viral symptoms such as fatigue, aches, headache, as well as some more upper respiratory symptoms such as runny nose, sore throat, some sneezing, and not nearly as much kind of fever, not nearly as much loss of taste and smell, and not nearly as much cough. And that's important to note. Um, so, so far we kind of have a vaccinated population and an unvaccinated population report these. We just wanted to flip over quick to the kind of Zoe website here. Um, and this is it. And uh, they go into, this was updated on December 21st. It's the 24th today. Um, so this is just a few days old. And what they say here is kind of what we talked about. So they actually did a, you know, a, a good comparison. They compared their current data with data from early October when Delta was the dominant variant. And they report no clear difference in the symptom profile of Delta and Omicron. All right, we didn't highlight that very well, but you can see here, no clear difference in the symptom profile between Delta and Omicron. It's interesting though, because then they go on to say, you know, only 50% of people had those classic three symptoms. And the top five symptoms were what we talked about here. So the Zoe app, uh, Zoe study is essentially, uh, the Zoe study group is essentially saying that Delta and Omicron have very similar symptoms, um, although the symptoms they're reporting are as below. So keep that all in mind. The last uh, study that has looked at this is, is something interesting. It's out of Norway. So this is the title. Um, all these are linked in the video description. And it's uh, they looked at an outbreak of Omicron that uh, occurred at the end of November and the beginning of December in Norway. And essentially, there was over 100 people at a holiday party in Norway. And it resulted in 81 cases of Omicron. And what they did is they interviewed all these patients and kind of documented their symptoms, when their symptoms started, how long they last for, how severe they were. And what they found was that the most likely symptom was cough. And we actually didn't see a lot of these in the uh, Zoe uh, study group app, right? There was not cough in these top symptoms or in the South African cohort that they initially identified Omicron in. And cough is a more kind of, uh, um, you know, again, pathognomonic stereotypical COVID symptom. But they did see runny nose, which they saw in the Zoe cohort, fatigue, which they saw in the Zoe cohort and the South African, right? Uh, so two, two stars there. Uh, sore throat, which they saw in the Zoe cohort, headache, which they saw in the South African data and the Zoe cohort. And then they did have over 50% that had a fever, which again is kind of one of those classic COVID symptoms. These were mostly young and vaccinated patients. So again, in vaccinated patients, it seems like at least per these reports, we're seeing more of these kind of, again, URI, upper respiratory infections. Whereas in those original South African data, we're gonna scroll back up in the original South African reports where they're mostly unvaccinated, we saw less of those upper respiratory infection symptoms and more of kind of systemic viral infection symptoms such as fatigue, body aches, and headache. All right, we are gonna flip over to this study out of Norway, because there's actually some other interesting things to, to glean from it. And again, this is linked in the video description. So they essentially say that uh, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health was notified um, of suspected breakout of COVID. Uh, it was towards the end of November, and it was at a restaurant in Oslo in Norway. And there was a Christmas party going on, a little bit of a pre-party. You know, all this is kind of less important, but we're just kind of setting the scene here. And they essentially followed up on this cohort. And there was 117 people in attendance, all right? And they noticed that there was a positive Omicron test. Um, they then ended up swabbing everybody, and we're going to go down. And what they found was, of these... Um, 111 out of 117 people participated in this kind of study. They were younger, you know, their average age was 39 years old. Um, 
43% of them were women. Most of them, so 96% of them were fully vaccinated. All right. Most of those that were fully vaccinated, 89% had received two doses of an mRNA vaccine. Um, and then none had reported having the booster yet. All actually had a negative rapid antigen self-test at home within one to two days before attending the event, um, which is interesting to note. And then uh, eight had previously had COVID, so 7% had previously had COVID, but none in the last four months. Of the 111 there, 66 were confirmed cases and 15 were probable cases. All right. One PCR positive attendee was confirmed to be Delta and excluded from the analysis. The rest of them were actually Omicron. Um, so the Omicron attack rate was 74%, 81 of the 110 people there. Um, again, they were a younger population. Most were women. Um, and then what the interesting part is uh, this paragraph here. So we're going to go through this paragraph. So the incubation period for symptomatic cases range from zero to eight days with a median of three days. And this is a little faster, actually, than the other variants. Um, you know, symptom onset and the other variants sometimes would happen in two to three days, but it'd be more so more commonly, you know, in the five to seven day range. So symptoms might come on a little earlier, at least in this vaccinated young population. What, only one case was asymptomatic. All right. And the 74 reported at least three symptoms. And remember, this was a vaccinated population and only one of the cases was asymptomatic. Of the 81 cases, here are the most common symptoms, which we talked about. When asked to grade the severity of their symptoms on a scale of one to five, 42% reported level three symptoms, 11 reported level four symptoms. All right. So they're kind of moderate to severe symptoms. None required hospitalization at least two weeks into kind of the study period. And they put this table in here about the symptoms specifically. And what we can see here, these are cases on the right. And we see those common ones we talked about, cough, runny nose, fatigue, sore throat, headache. There were muscle pains, uh, which we actually forgot to write down. So a number did report muscle aches, which again was in that South African cohort. Um, but you can see here that one of those common COVID symptoms we think about, reduced smell, only seen in 12% of those infected reported reduced smell, which is a really small number, right? Um, compared to the kind of typical COVID symptoms, which reduced smell is a big one. We talked about 23% reported reduced taste. So again, not nearly as much reduced smell, reduced taste. This cohort did have a lot of cough and they did have a fair amount of fever, again, which they didn't report in the Zoe study or in that initial South African cohort. Um, the only other things we wanted to point out was duration of symptoms, which they said they couldn't uh, um, confidently estimate. Um, and then the discussion, there was a few points we wanted to point out in the discussion, um, which we already mentioned. The median incubation period seemed to be three days, which is a little shorter compared to Delta, um, which they actually formally say here is about five days. Um, they said most of the uh, patients developed at least one symptom, so there weren't really many asymptomatic infections. There just was one asymptomatic infection in this vaccinated population. All right. So we just wanted to kind of uh, give you all an update on the most common symptoms of Omicron because there's a lot out there. And I think many people are focusing on kind of this original South African data. Um, and then the next cohort is kind of uh, focusing on the Zoe data all great, all important, but it's not a lot of patients. Um, and we can see here that there's some variability. Now, is this geographic variability, right? This is South African data. Zoe is a, a more UK data. And then this is Norwegian data. So does it depend on where you're at? Does it depend on if you were infected previously or if you're vaccinated or if you're young and old? Um, all that could play a role to kind of how our immune system deals with this. But I think the, I think the kind of summary statement here is you might have typical COVID symptoms, but you very well may just have kind of nonspecific upper respiratory tract symptoms, runny nose, sore throat, some sneezing, or you might have kind of classical just viral syndrome symptoms, fatigue, body aches, headache without any upper respiratory symptoms, no coughs, no fevers, no loss of taste or smell. So you got to be very vigilant. And if you're experiencing any kind of cold-like, flu-like viral symptoms at all, I think it's worth getting tested um, given a lot of people have um, 
more nonspecific symptoms. The other thing I think is really important for us to figure out, most of these patients were young, right? Some, most were vaccinated over the three studies, um, some unvaccinated in the South African cohort. But it'd be, you know, really important to see what the symptoms are in the elderly population too, or a more, more, more comorbid population, a higher risk population. So hopefully all that data will come um, as t uh, time goes on here in the next weeks, given how quickly things are spreading. Um, but in the meantime, these are really things to keep in mind um, to try to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. All right. We appreciate you checking out the video. Again, happy holidays, happy new year. Um, for those of you celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Uh, stay well, keep learning, and we'll see you all next time.